Life is so delicate. If you can get your brain out of the monkey mind of thinking about the past, the future, you know, being somewhere else and just actually just absorb what you have in front of you, you realize you are lucky. You are lucky. You're so fortunate to have that moment. Even if your foot hurts or your pancreas hurts, whatever, you're still lucky to be alive in this moment. My name is Matt Cotton. I came to Tucson 30 years ago to go to grad school at the U of A to study painting. I got really involved with the community. Right away, there were two things going on in my art pursuit, which was making paintings and functioning as a grad student and a teacher. And on the other hand, doing experimental performance with puppets, costuming, fire. I really think of Matt as a storyteller. His paintings really inhabit this space between telling a narrative and also giving you enough abstraction and space and color and line and mark making that isn't so literal that you can kind of like fill in the story for yourself, which is what I really love. The less I can tell you, the more you have to project your own thoughts and ideas into the painting to understand it. Although I know that people love to hear from the artists why it's this way and what your influences and your inspirations were, but it's almost like that's secret stuff. You don't get to know that. So the subject of my paintings is the space and how humans interact with the space. I am always interested in work that shows the process. And so mine obviously shows the process. I do like leaving the graphite and the sort of raw, almost gesso white here and there but also have layers that lead up to a rich, rich color and some very suggestive space or something really three-dimensional. Seeing layers in a painting suggests the many moments in my life that you know lead up to this point. When he's in his studio, that is his sacred time. That is like his um, time when he's really in his own world and he just gets to focus on on making and on crafting. The painting, it's like, then the piece can be presented to the world and you can view it and it is what it is. I'm not just some kind of mystic person in my studio doing something that gets blown away with the wind. I'm making objects that don't go away so easily. What do these objects mean to people? Painting is about the things that it is not. It's about space. It's about movement. It's about passage of time. The lasting legacy of painting is the rectangle. Your viewers are looking at a rectangle right this moment. This is the language of our existence. I look at my, my growth as an artist, and part of that has always been trying to break out of the rectangle to some degree. So the cutouts are an effort to break the rectangle, bring the figures out of their ground and place them in architecture. So I think it's an effort to get people to think about the space that they're in. I started puppeteering when I was a really little kid. It's because I was a uh, severe asthmatic in upstate New York, in and out of the hospital all the time. And I was in this oxygen tent for, you know, many days in a row. And so I would create voices and scenarios and narratives and characters, which is something that a lot of little kids do with a good imagination. With the puppets, the stories maybe are a little bit more literal. 
but it becomes this live experience of, of interaction with people, with children, with adults, like taking this very internal process that he has and then bringing it out to community, which is so beautiful. You jump to grad school where I was just kind of yearning for something more than just a gallery show. And so I was getting involved with the local community of underground artists that were doing experimental uh, performance in the streets, different stages around town. And so I started making puppets, giant puppets, and getting into the traditions, of, you know, various traditions from around the world and exploring different kinds of puppetry. For a long time, used paper mache. Then the mice kept eating my puppets when I'd put them into storage. So I switched to other kinds of more synthetic glue. So I still use paper. I just don't use the flour anymore. It's gluten-free puppets now. He's really an outside the box thinker. He's never been satisfied with only being able to make art that exists on a rectangle and hangs on the wall and goes in a gallery or is in somebody's house. I mean, that's wonderful, but to him, he wanted something more. My painting is always evolving. It's always changing. My performance, my music, my puppetry, it's always changing. I'm always looking for something. Even though I've been in Tucson, been a homeboy in Tucson for so long, within that context, I want to continuously be discovering new stuff about my environment and about what is going on inside me head. I'm hooked on screens just like everyone else. But it's really important for me every day to step away from that and go out and experience real space and be actively involved in really noticing everything about it. The temperature, the walls around you, or, you know, the vast space in front of you. Those are the things I experience when I walk. I try to pay attention, I try to get out of my head and experience the world.